It's possible to refer to a number of command line variables by directly naming each one, like this. With this script, the subdirectory safety is created if it doesn't already exist, and three files named on the command line are copied into the directory. This is okay, and it'll work for exactly three files, but if you name less than three files, the script will execute the copy command on a blank name, and if you name more than three files, the extra ones are just ignored. Ideally, we want to be able to write a script that will copy as many files as are named on the command line. Let me show you a simple approach for doing that. The first thing we want to do is determine the number of arguments that were specified on the command line, like this does. It's very simple to do. Here's the script that does it. The shell variable named number sign or pound sign or gridlet or whatever contains the count of the number of variables on the command line. Now all that's left to do is execute the copy command for each one of them. The shell has some built-in commands that will help us do this. The until command will execute a block of code as long as a tested conditional is false. And the test command will execute a conditional expression and result in true or false. Look at this script. The until command executes the test command to check whether there are zero arguments on the command line, and if there are, it quits. However, if the count is not zero, the code between do and done is executed. Now this is only two lines of code. The first line is the echo command used to display the first argument. The second line is the word shift. What shift does is throw away the contents of argument 1 and replace it with the contents of argument 2. 2 is replaced with 3, 3 with 4, and so on until every argument has been shifted over by one position. At that point, the whole thing starts over at the until statement again, and test is used to determine the count of the number of arguments left. There will be one less than last time, but if the count is greater than zero, the do block executes again. Every argument on the command line passes through the $1 position and is displayed, like this. Now that works just fine, and I'm sure you can see how this can be made to solve the problem at hand. However, before I do that, let me show you a more common form of the test keyword. This is just like the previous script, but notice that the test command has been replaced by a couple of square brackets in closing the expression. This is exactly the same. The shell translates the brackets into test, and this script works just like the other one. You can write it either way. They're exactly the same, but it's much more common to use the square brackets, and you'll find that in most Linux system shells, that's what's been done, so that's why I showed it to you. Very rarely do people use the word test. Anyway, here is a version of our backup script that will save copies of whatever files you name on the command line. It begins by creating the safety directory and redirecting any errors from it to the null device. Then it loops once for each argument on the command line and copies each one of them into the directory. Now the script is much more usable than it was before. It isn't perfect, but it's better than it was, and you can save all the files in the current directory this way. Doing this, the shell expands the asterisk to all the names in the current directory, so all the files are copied into the safety directory. You can run it as often as you wish to refresh the files in the safety directory by copying right over the top of them. See, I told you it wasn't perfect. The asterisk included the name of the directory in the list this time because it was there from the last time we ran the command. The copy command cannot copy a directory, and even if it could, it certainly couldn't copy a directory into itself. We'll deal with this in the next lesson.